Okay, in this tutorial we're going to be looking at creating a wipeout style track in 3ds Max. Uh, then we're going to look at how to create a um, trail for our wipeout vehicle and also how to texture the wipeout vehicle as well. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is actually make our track. Now uh, I expect you guys will already have your own kind of idea for what the track is going to look like but um, I'm going to quickly rough one out and you can use these techniques to apply to your own design. Okay so if we come over to the shapes tab and then select the line tool in my top view I'm going to well actually I'm going to right click to cancel that I'm just going to set my initial type to smooth in the options and now if I'm just going to click and just start making my rough track okay so there's the rough shape that I want for my circuit now so if I come over to the modifier tab you see you have vertex um, segment and spline in the same way that you have your five modes for edit poly so we're going to go into vertex mode and in our perspective view I'm just going to ramp up a section of this as well then select these two and kind of move them down just so that we've got some different topology to our circuit okay so now we've made our initial kind of track layout the next thing we need to do is make a shape that we're going to loft around this track. Okay, so to do that again we're going to use the line tool and this time in our front view rather than our top view I'm going to change the type to corner I'm going to do the classic kind of wipeout track. If you hold shift, by the way, while you're making your line, it will uh, snap it to a straight line. So make our shape like that. Um, and then if we come over to our modify tab and in the and then select spline, then actually select our main spline like that. I'm going to use G just to turn off the grid on these as well by the way, I don't need that right now. Okay, so select the spline and you'll see in the options here I actually have this outline setting. So if I just hit this, I can actually create an outline for this shape. So I'll do it about like that, and then come out of spline mode, and then using R on the keyboard to go to scale, I'm just going to scale this right down. So, so obviously this, this is what's actually going to loft around this shape so it needs to be the right size. Once I've scaled it down I am just going to come over to the hierarchy tab and just reset my transform and my scale. Um, and then I would say we're pretty much ready to go. We have our line for our track and we have the shape we want to loft along it. Okay, so the next thing we'll do then is actually go to loft. So if you come over to the create tab, go to the geometry tab, and then from the drop down list just select compound objects, and then select the path and go to loft. Now you see here you've actually got two options here you've got get path and get shape. Now we're on the path here, and obviously this is our shape. Now you have to do it this way around, you've got to make sure you select the path first and then go to get shape and get shape. Now let's just just want to show you here, if I undo that and this time I select the shape, go to loft and then go get path, you'll see it won't do it correctly, it's actually not done exactly how we want. Okay, now you might find you have a few issues here. Now mine's actually worked first time. If I go to loft, select the path, then go get shape, you'll see mine's actually done it 
correctly. But you might find you've got something like something like that. Well, there's a couple of ways to fix that, and basically the main way to fix it is to do exactly what I just did, which is to create our loft. and then select the loft itself, go to modify and in our loft settings just select the shape and then you can actually see the shape in the viewport here, I can just that or you can just click and drag. And then if you go to your rotate tool and make sure you've got angle snap ticked on here then you can actually rotate this until it's on the right orientation and if you look down here you'll see that you can actually use that because you want to go 90 degrees basically or 180 degrees or some kind of variable of 90. Okay but also another thing I'm going to do is actually come in here go to scale and I'm actually just going to shrink this down a bit so like that. So I want my track to be a bit bigger. Okay so we're getting somewhere now notice a few issues, the main issue here is that it's very kind of jagged along here but if we press F4 you'll notice how we actually have a lot of loops in the, um, in the shape but not many in the path. Now we can change that though in our loft settings if we go to uh, scroll down go to skin parameters can actually set first of all the shape steps and I'm going to put that right down to zero and then we can also set the path steps here I'm just going to increase this like so now that's still not very high detail to be honest we could actually increase more increase this number even higher now notice how we're getting a slight problem down here and that's actually an issue with the main path so you can actually, if we just select the loft right to the top here, I'm just going to move this out of the way. I think we can actually come in here and tweak this. Yeah, so we can. So we can actually try and fix this problem here. So I'm going to, first of all, try welding this. And the next thing I'm going to try and do is set this to Bezier. In fact, right click Bezier Corner. Then I'm going to try and fix this problem. Maybe it's because this isn't lined up here. So we will go to our right view and just try and line this up. Do you ever have any problems with your? Um, you know, you're locked on axis, so you can't move. If you use F8, that will toggle between the different axes. So let's try the front view. And there we go, we can see oh, there's a problem there. Oh, by the way, it's V on the keyboard to switch between different viewports, by the way. And the last view we'll check V and then go to top view and just pull this one in as well. Okay, so that will do for now. Okay, so what about any other settings that we need to tweak here? Well you can see the actual shape is looking pretty good but um, one other useful lot of things you can turn off first of all try ticking on optimize shapes then try adaptive path steps and then try banking as well because that can be really useful because that will actually keep this main part of the track flat and that's really useful for when you like doing roads and things but for wipeout you might something like a wipeout track you might actually want to leave banking on. So I'm actually going to turn it off for this example but 
Just bear in mind that because this is a wipeout thing, you might actually leave that on. Okay, so the next, probably the most useful thing with this tool, if we tick on apply mapping, this will actually um, unwrap this for us, which is really, really useful. So we are going to make a quick text of this, but if you just load up your material editor, apply the first material, then in your diffuse slot, let's so click on the little blue box there, if we select checker, set our tiling to say 20 and 20, and then make it visible. Now it's difficult to understand this if you're not very used to texturing, but you'll soon see um, how this is working. Um, if you try changing your length repeat up to say 10, you'll see that texture-wise this is actually mapped perfectly for a tiling texture. So this means if we create a tiling texture for this track, say just with a arrow on it like so, that will follow all the way along here. So let's try doing that now. So if you load up Photoshop, let's make a new 1024 by 1024 texture. And what we'll do with this is say Give it a really kind of manky orange colour. I don't really know why. Um, this first colour that's going to pop it into my head. And if you use Alt Delete, that will fill in for you. Then we'll make a new layer and we'll use the custom shape tool. And for the shapes list, I'm sure there'll be one that we can use for this. So, something like this big arrow here. So something like that. Obviously we need to change the colour, so we'll just put something like white in this. Now we will centre this roughly and then go to transform path and rotate counterclockwise like so. Then another thing we'll do here is just add in another layer and add in a white line like so. Okay, so I'm just going to save this. I might as well just leave it as a PSD. Actually, you can actually use PSDs as um, textures. And uh, bad practice, but I'm just going to stick this on my desktop for the sake of this example. Okay, so now if you come back in and load up your material editor, in the diffuse slot, we'll check on. Uh, click on the checker tab and select bitmap this time and then browse to that track it asks for collapsed layers or individual, obviously we want collapsed and if we make this visible you can see how <laughs> it's a bit big at the moment this is actually <coughs> flowing nicely around our track so let's come back into our loft settings and change, increase our length repeat to about 30 and then we will also set the width repeat to say 2. We can see now if we get right down here we've already modelled and unwrapped the main part of our of our wipeout track. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do then is actually make some supports to kind of go around this track. And also what we're going to do is apply a different texture to these side bits and maybe shrink this arrow one in as well.